Hi and happy Tuesday. How are you? How is your week going? How's your month going? Honestly, let's talk about that for just a hot second. So uh, it is April 26th. Our last day of the month is Saturday. Saturday is the last day of April. Um, I I cannot believe that we've already flown through this month. I don't know about you guys, but it went really, really fast for me. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> Some months do that, though. Uh, but I do know that there is a lot of success to be said and to be talked about when it comes to April. First, let me let me just do, I'm going to do some something a little bit different in this Tuesday training, and I wanted to just very quickly give some shout outs to uh, the top team members this week here on our Tuesday training. So I am pulling this up. All right. April 2022. All right. I am going to shout out. Um, I'm going to shout out the top 10. Yeah, let's do the top 10 because you guys are going to, of course, see the top 50 for the group. This is the top 10 for my team. So um, if Lisa Sanderson or Emma Roloff is your director, then you're, you're in there. If, if I am your director slash star director, um, then that's my team. Okay, you guys are my team. So I'm going to shout out my t top 10 in my team. Oh my gosh, I'm going to try and trip myself up here with all these T words. All right, coming in in number one for sales so far for April 2022, Trina Spencer. Congratulations. Um, she is very close to the monthly sales award. Very excited for that. And I'm pretty sure she's probably gonna gonna hit that mark because she usually does. Uh, number two, Heather Rittenauer, yay! Number three is Rayana Ignate, yay! Rayana is actually, um, she lives in Guam. She is part of our Guam team. And if you guys know anything about Guam, Google Guam and Google how big Guam is and you will see how big of an impact and how big of a thing this is that Rihanna is consistently working her business because let me tell you, you guys want to talk about, oh, I don't have a whole lot of people to sell to or I don't have a whole lot of customers. Again, look at how big Guam is and you tell me, would you be able to do it there? I don't think so. All right. So she is working her business very hard each and every month. I just had to give that shout out. Um, number four is Kimber Vladich. Yay! Number five, Melanie Lemons. Number six, Terry Pringle. Number seven, Alexis Marks. Number eight is Elizabeth Stapleton. Number nine, Curtis Poe. And coming in, rounding out number 10th, or in the 10th place, is Missy Coleman. Congratulations! to the hashtag sent 365 top 10 for the month so far. So I had to do that. I had to give that shout out um, because it's something I normally don't do on this video, but I thought, you know what? I'm excited so you guys can get excited too. Uh, so be watching after this. You guys will, of course, see the regular shout outs. Those of you who also get your weekly emails, you know you're going to be looking at those emails. Um, and I have to do a really quick blurb for my team. Again, my team. If I am your director, star director, um, I have started. I started this last month. I meant to start it in January, but you know, I'm human. It just, that's the way it goes. So I started it for the second quarter of the year. Um, and what I am doing is, this might sound corny. It is the pen of the month club. P-E-N, right? The pen that you write with, okay? It's the pen of the month club. So if you are on my team and you are leader above and you get paid at title, then you receive a brand new pen every single month. And I'm going to give you a little peek. Um, I don't have any more printouts because, you know, I only printed what I needed. Uh, but these went out last for last month's paid at title for my team. Everybody got bunny pins. They are just, I, well, they, that's the little tip. You take that little tip off, right? So, um, 
perfect little note taking pens. So it was, uh, I think it was a bunny. Um, and it said it, some bunny is very excited for you or something like that. Anyway, so they got the bunny pens. They got the bunny pens. Um, I do have the April pens here, but, um, I'm, I'm only going to give a little, I want to, I want to just like tease this here. See if I can tease it. You know, just a little bit in the frame. Maybe here we go. Ooh, okay. There was, <laughs> so there's a little bit of fun for you. Those are going to be, um, the pens for everyone who is in my team that has paid a title for April. So if you've already hit that, that's fantastic. I'm in the middle of running. Well, I've actually ran uh, two of my reports. I just haven't actually looked at them because I've been going live in different places um, this morning. So <laughs> I've been a busy little bee on Facebook, but I wanted to just show you guys that that is something that I wanted to do. It's it's something that to me just screamed fun. I needed to do something fun to start recognizing all of you who are working so hard to be paid a title. Um, I know that I, that is a big thing. Um, it was for me when I was starting out and really laser focusing in on, okay, this is done with business, not a hobby. And so being paid a title um, was something that I really had to work for each and every month. And I knew for my title what I needed to get. I knew what I needed. Um, and so that would be my goal every single month. And not going to lie, right? Remember, I did not start out like running out of the gate like a lot of you do. And I love, I love watching you guys starting strong. Uh, for those of you who haven't started strong, you know what? you can still do anything you want with this business because I'm the poster child for not starting out strong at all. Um, I don't remember how long it took me to get certified, but I can tell you it was not in my first 30 days, wasn't in my first 60 days. Maybe it was my first 90. I honestly don't know. Um, <clears throat> so if that tells you anything, okay, you're not alone if you are working at a different speed. You're okay, okay? All right, so your rhythm, your groove is going to come and the only way you're gonna be able to find your groove is to figure out how you are organizing your business. So that is the topic for today because I felt it was very, very important to talk about, as always. Um, I am a very um, structure-based person person. I need structure in my life. If I don't have structure, that's usually when my anxiety sets in, um, worry, depression, all the things like start like piling on. I have to have structure. So I make sure that I set myself up for success in that way. And one of those ways that I do that is to literally plan my week. So, um, I use, um, well, I use good notes on my iPad. Okay. So I do have that. Um, and so I've got my planner there and I will set up like my major plot points, <laughs> my plot points for the week, right? The major things that I'm going to tackle each week or each day, right? Remember I work my business with a theme. Every day has a theme. I've carried this on ever since I was working full time because I found it really hard to keep up with my business when I was working 40 plus hours and um, all my kids were little um, or younger. Um, Madison was little. Um, my husband and I worked different shifts. So because, you know, hashtag daycare is flipping expensive, uh, which is why now that I am going to be an abuela, my oldest is 25. She's having... Um, having a baby. She is pregnant. Uh, we get, I get to go with her to all of her doctor's appointments. I'm so excited. She's having me included in all of that. But, uh, May the 2nd is her first doctor's appointment. Uh, she'll be almost three months at that time. Um, so I can tell you that I'm also going to, this business has allowed me to not only be there for my kids and my family when they needed me when they were younger but now it's allowing me the opportunity to be there for my grandchild that's on its way right and that in itself i thank god every single day that he put sensi in in my path in my journey and that's how i look at things right this is my journey this is 
you want to call it, this is my book, right? These are my chapters and we all have different chapters. We all go through different seasons throughout our life, throughout our journey. You're going to change. Things are going to change. Circumstances are going to change. Um, that light is going to change. That is blinding me in the face. Um, <laughs> things are going to change. And so we have to be able to, what's my favorite word? Pivot. We have to be able to pivot when things happen. Um, but I want you to know that even when all the craziness, chaos, controlled chaos is going on around you, you still have the ability to take control. And like I said, it, it did take me a while to kind of get on that path of how to take control in my business. It seems, um, it, it really does seem like, well, duh, it's my business. I should be able to figure this out, right? Well, let me tell you, Yes, there's a lot of books on how to be an entrepreneur, how to be, you know, an independent person, work for yourself, be your own boss, right? Believe it, okay? Believe it. All the things about building your empire, building your business, building your future. Um, you can read all those things, but when you actually start to go putting them into practice, that's where, that's where I see a lot of people either, they either take that runway and run with it or they get stuck on the runway and I've seen people when they get stuck what's the easiest thing to do when you're stuck that's to give up right and to throw out an excuse oh I'm too busy uh or I've done as much as I can do right now or I've given this business all I can give or um I just don't have enough time for this or I'm just not good enough at this and I'm not I'm not I'm not throwing all of that out there onto the floor. And let me tell you right now, you're going to have to just literally, you can't pick the I'm not back up. So if this is something that you need to do, throw out all your why nots, say them aloud, say them aloud. And I want you to visualize just saying them aloud and the words literally falling on the floor around you. Visualize it. Our brains, our minds are built for this. And this is how people who are extremely successful will tell you that visualization, affirmations, all of these things, they may seem hokey or silly or whatever, but let me tell you, and they will tell you too, they work. So I want you to visualize all your I can'ts laying across the floor. And then I want you to visualize yourself sweeping them away. Sweep them into the trash. You've gotten it out of your system. They're now there. You've said it. It's out there. It's done, right? Another really great way to symbolize or to do this visually is to write all your I can'ts down on a piece of paper. Go outside with, with your lighter, which, you know, we do Scentsy here, so we don't have to light a whole lot of things when it comes to, when it comes to scents. Just saying. Uh, but find a lighter borrow one from a friend, um, and light that piece of paper on fire safely, carefully, of course. Um, but light it on fire. That is the, one of the most intense visualizations you, you can do. Honestly. Um, I did that a lot after my divorce. Um, I was married for 10 years before, um, my husband and I, uh, have been married now and I got married right out of high school. I started a family right out of high school. Um, I was 18 when I got married and thought I knew everything. Thought I had it all figured out. All figured out. Let me just tell you right now. Spoiler alert. Was not all figured out. Did not have it all figured out. But here's the thing. I went through, um, went through that. Came out of that um, through a very, very, very nasty divorce. And I felt this big, this big. My self-esteem was nowhere to be found. Um, my confidence in myself was nowhere to be found. Uh, I went from being a kid, right, to being married and being a wife and a mom at 18. I, that was the first time when I was getting divorced at 28, 29 years old, going through that, it was the first time I'd ever done anything on my own. Literally had my own apartment. I had my own things. I felt 
so inadequate. It's not even funny. And I, I can't even count how many nights I cried myself to sleep. It was a, a really painful time in my life. And one of the ways that I was able to get out of that and to put myself on a different track, so to speak, on a different path, was to literally write out all the horrible things that I'd been thinking and saying to myself and telling myself in my head and even out loud, right? I'm not good enough. No one's going to want to be with me. I'm going to be alone the rest of my life, right? I had two young kids. I, I didn't know how to be a single mom. I didn't know how to be a single person. I didn't, I didn't know anything. And so I had very little, very little emotionally, mentally, physically, um, very little. And after a lot of nights of just crying and, and having it out and writing in my journals and things like this, that, that really helped me to get through those times. I remember I had somebody had told me at work to write things down and then light it on fire and let it go. And I was like, oh, that's the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard in my life. Why, how in the world is that going to help me in my life? It's just not. So I didn't do anything with that information. I did nothing but continue to see myself as this big, right? And finally, one night after I'd cried and cried and cried, and I was just sick and tired of crying at that point in time, right? It was like, if you've ever been at that point, if you've ever had that moment in your, li in your life where you're just like, I've cried all the tears. I cried them all. What the hell do I do? And there was that flash of the memory of somebody telling me to write it down and go light it on fire. And I was like, screw it. I'm writing this crap down. So I did. I took, uh, I actually took like three pages out of my journal to do it. <laughs> I had a lot of negative statements, people. Don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of negative things. Uh, that I'd been saying to myself, that I'd been calling myself. I called myself horrible things. I called myself unworthy and less than and, you know, really awful things. And so I did. I sat there and I wrote, wrote all of them down, front and back of three pages out of my out of my journal. And I remember just sitting there like, all right, now I gotta go burn it. And I was like, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. And uh, I was, there I was in my own apartment for the first time in my life. Screw it, here we go. So I got side to the balcony. I had gotten this, um, I, didn't have a, I didn't have a bowl that wasn't plastic. So I got uh, like my, you know, like the, the spaghetti pot is what I call it, right? The big quart, you know, pan, whatever. And I took that out on my balcony. I was like, all right, I'm going to light it on fire. And then I poured some water in it because, you know, I'm a little paranoid. What am I going to do if the catch is on fire? <laughs> it was a hot mess, okay? Literally, hot mess. Uh, so I have this pan with a little bit of water in it. I go outside and I start reading every single thing that I'd written down. I read it aloud, read it aloud front and back, all three pages took the lighter and I held all three pages together and I lit them on fire and I was standing uh of course over my little my little pot right with with the water in it and watching it burn and I will tell you that was probably the first time in months that I actually took the deepest breath because it was that visualization of just watching all of those negative things those bad things that I thought about myself, that I wasn't worth anything, that I was a horrible mom, person, wife, you name it. I was it. I was not the best person because that's what I've been telling myself. And so visually seeing it burn, it was eye opening. And so afterwards, of course, you know, I've got my bucket now, or not my bucket, my pot. And I'm like, all right, it's all out. I took that deep breath and I went inside and then I cleaned the pot out because, you know, who else can do it? So I went inside, cleaned it out, sat down on my couch. I didn't have the TV on. I didn't have the radio on. I didn't have anything on, which was unusual for me. 
Um, and I just sat there on the couch and for the first time, like I said, in months, probably in years, I just felt this weight lifted. Like, okay, that is gone. So now how do I move forward? So it was that culmination of crying all the crying, crying all the tears, letting it all go, acknowledging all the horrible things that I'd said about myself and how I felt about myself and realizing that I'd given it all down. I'd given it all up, right? I'd, I'd, I'd thrown all my I can'ts on the floor and now I've swept them away. So now it was time to do something. So I started making a plan. And that very next day, I remember I woke up and uh, I had a habit at that time of, I'd write in my journal in the morning. Um, I wasn't working. I had taken personal leave uh, from a job because obviously I was a hot mess, remember? So I, I didn't have a job to go to, but I would wake up in the morning and I would usually write in my journal. Um, and then I would just kind of putter around for the day and then wait for, you know, wait for my mom to tell me what she was going to be doing for dinner and then, you know, go on with life. And I woke up that next morning and I wrote in my journal and uh, I stopped about, I don't know, about a couple sentences in of writing in my journal and just kind of sat there like, this has to change. This has to change. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a change. And I did. From that point on and so I started doing things differently I started talking to myself differently I started um, waking up and the first thing I would do is I would go in the bathroom I'd brush my teeth and I would tell myself and I would look at myself in the mirror and I would say I am worthy I don't even remember how many times I would say it but it was a lot because it took a lot at that time and after a while, the, the clouds start to clear. And while it probably didn't happen overnight, looking back, you know, it was the, the best thing that I could do was kind of to clean my own slate clean, to wipe it clean. So I want you guys to kind of take from that into your business and if you find yourself struggling, if you find yourself at that point of going, how, how am I going to hit that paid at title every month? How am I going to make these, these dreams come true? How am I going to get through this time? How am I going to, you know, do all the things? I'm not going to lie. You have to let go of the negative first. Because if you carry the negative with you into that new season, it's going to taint the new season. They're still going to linger. They're still going to be there. You have to let them go. So whatever that way is for you, let it go. And then I want you to sit down and, and come up with what does my week look like? Do you work? Do you have, you know, job commitments? Do you have kid commitments? Do you have family commitments? What are the things that need to be done every day, right? Write them all down. Take your calendar. Take a piece of paper. Write it all down. And then I want you to say, okay, and look at that and say, okay, now how can my sensei fit into this? What can I do to make this business work for me, with me, with my schedule? And so that's how I started was saying, okay, on Mondays, I really didn't have a whole lot to do. So I was going to, you know, and, and everybody hates a Monday, right? I used to anyway. Um, and so that initially was why it became my personal development day because I wasn't quite ready to people. And so I was like, all right, on that day, I'm going to try and like use that to just get my motor going for the week. And to this day, to this day, that has been the way that I I work my business. I've incorporated it into my business. Finding out and, and walking through all of these ways to be able to get to the things that you want to get at or to be or to accomplish are going to be at the mercy of you. How bad do you want it? How much are you willing to pour into it? 
work wise to do it? And what's your game plan? What's your roadmap look like to get there? Do you know what your roadmap is? So if that is, right, to get paid a title, well, you can do one of two things. You can, um, and we did a screen share yesterday, the workstation, going through the changes of the workstation. You can go to your workstation. You can pull up that. You don't even have to pull it up. As soon as you log in, that, that first page, it's going to take you to your dashboard. And remember, you got to fill those circles. If you missed that, go back and watch yesterday's training about the, about the workstation. Um, fill those circles. That's how you know, that's how you know what you need to do to get paid a title. If you're lead and above, right? You have to get to lead first. Okay. We all have to step in those steps. We all have to walk that staircase. And then after that, I mean, of course you can still use your dad, my dashboard's right here. And of course you can still use your dashboard, but y'all, we got, we got a compensation plan in every single catalog. It's on your website. It's on your join page of your website. It's in your workstation, right? Figure out what it is you need to do to be paid a title. I can tell you every single month what it takes for you to be paid a title. But if, if you're not absorbing that energy, if you're not absorbing that knowledge, if you're not writing it down, if you're not making that into your goals, then you're not going to hit those points. Let me tell you right now, the, the months that I didn't get paid a title were the months that I didn't hit my goals. That's just truth. I didn't hit my goals. And that's okay. It doesn't make me a bad consultant or not good at this business. It just means, okay, well, next month I got to try harder or I got to switch up what I'm doing because obviously what I did this month didn't work or I came close, but not close enough. So what else can I do to give it a little more oomph to get there next month, right? As I always say, I am only in competition with myself. Please, you guys, stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop comparing yourself to what other people are sending out in happy mails. Stop comparing yourself to where people are in the incentive. Stop comparing yourself to how somebody's lifestyle looks on social media, right? We all know it's a highlight reel. Stop comparing yourself. The only person you have to compare yourself to is who you were yesterday, who you were last month, and beat that person. That is your competition. And the goalie who is keeping you from getting there, that's up here. That's where the mindset comes in, right? That's where maybe it takes writing things down and lighting the paper on fire or visually, you know, throwing the eye cans on the floor and sweeping them away. Whatever that is for you to get through those, then get through those. And then set yourself up on a path that's going to work for you. I, I did a podcast. Um, I'll have to see if I can find uh, that episode. I did a podcast where I talked about um, how to be successful in your business by only working three hours a week. Three hours a week. Can you spare three hours a week? I mean, I did when I was working over 40 plus hours in office. Um, and then hours outside of the office back at home. Uh, and then my youngest being younger and, and having to, you know, be the mom and take care of the house and come home and do all the chores. Yeah, I did that. But the only way I was able to do that was by making a plan for that time that I had. So you have to be intentional with your time and you have to stick to that time. You have to make it a habit. You just have to. And there's going to be weeks where, yeah, some weeks are harder than others. That's life. Welcome to it, right? But you have to learn to ebb and flow. Ebb and flow. You have to learn to pivot. You have to learn if this isn't working, then I need to switch it up. If I've asked everybody to host a party and nobody's hosting a party, well, then how are you asking? How are you asking people to host a party? Are you sending mass messages to people that you haven't talked to in years or maybe never even talked to, I can guarantee you right now, you're not going to get a whole lot of yeses that way. I, I, it's just true. But if you're reaching out to people on a personal level that you have a relationship with and you say, hey, 
I've started this business. It is important to me. I want to get going. I know you're too busy to, to do like a party or anything like that, but what if I set up a, a shopping link for you on my website and if you're interested in buying any Scentsy, you could, you know, use this link and then if you would just share this on your social media with your friends, if you know anybody who likes Scentsy, that would be really great. And then, you know, once it turns into a qualifying party, and you can tell them all this if you want to, right? Once it turns into a party, you get the rewards. And it's just you sharing a link. Would, would, would you do that for me to help me get my business going? And I will tell you, if you're reaching out in that way and reaching out to people who you do have relationships with, then you're going to find more people who are more apt to say, okay, sure, fine, set up that link for me. It's fine. I'll share it on my, on my Facebook. It's fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. It means so much to me that you're willing to do that for me because this is a business that I really want to make work. Or I really need it to work for me and my family. Or this is how I, may, I, I need to be able to make a car payment or make, you know, pay the bills. Hashtag income disclosure. Reach out to those people. Ask for referrals. You guys need to be building relationships. You need to be making connections. If that's utilizing social media, utilize your social media. If you're somebody who works outside the home, then let me tell you right now, you have a lot more opportunities than I do because I do not work outside the home. When I did, when I did work in office, I will tell you, I, I, I wasn't allowed to bring like my testers and like sell, right? Because hello, I'm there to work, not do the sensey thing. Okay, wasn't allowed to do all that. So what did I have to do? I had to get creative. And I would talk to... Uh, the people that I knew in the office or when I was at the hospital, um, I would go to a different floor and I would drop off a pouch party bag with testers and order forms and catalogs in it to nurses that I knew. And I would say, hey, just pass this around for the day. Um, I'm, I'm just really trying to get this business going. And I will tell you, people will do that for you. But you have to, again, approach the people that you already have relationships with or start building those relationships with them. Because if you just start mass messaging, mass asking people, or just putting some generic posts on Facebook that says, hey, this is on sale, drop below, or drop a comment if you want to order this. I mean, would you do, would you do that? <laughs> Maybe if it was something spectacular that you just loved, right? I mean, I guess there's, you know, the odds are, are could be in your favor. I don't know. But if you're not really speaking to the people who are your target audience, then you're falling on deaf ears and you're just literally, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You need to be talking to people that you already know. You need to be talking to people that you have relationships with. And like I said, it's not asking all of those people to host parties for you. It's saying and explaining to them, this is how I work this business. I, I do sales. Every sale makes a difference for me in my business, every single one, every single one, every single sale, whether it's a, a $2 light bulb to a $125 air purifier, I don't know. Every single one makes a difference in your business. So you have to look at it that way and you have to focus on, I need to start building my circle of people. And you need to ask for referrals. If they're not interested, if they don't like Scentsy, if they're allergic to Scentsy, if they're whatever, they don't like their house to smell good, they never do laundry. Okay, cool, that's fine. Do you know somebody who does do laundry? Because <laughs> we have laundry products, right? Ask for those referrals. Ask, would you share this on your social media? Ask, hey, would you, if I opened a shopping link, would you share it? You have to be doing those things. And you have to be showing up because here's the thing, whether or not you believe people are watching you on social media, they are, they are totally watching you just like you're watching them. Okay. So they see, and if you're going to sit there and be the negative, negative person on your Facebook all the time, and then the next comment is, don't you want to buy some Scentsy? They're going to be like, what is happening? Right? 
So that's part of why we talk about on specifically when it comes to social media, if that's what you're going to use to build your business, which that's what I did to build my business, right? I had to change up what I was doing on my social media. That meant that, yeah, I couldn't just post all the, you know, um, racy memes or, you know, ridiculous stuff or whatever it was, right? I had to really think about what are the things that I'm putting out there? What is the image that if somebody looks at my page, what is the image? What is the perception that they get from me? I want them to be able to see me as as somebody who is a business owner, who's running a business, who's serious about this, who wants to make this happen. So I have to hold myself up to that standard on my social media. If you don't use social media for your business, then do whatever you want on your social media. Because let me tell you right now, that's a thousand and one different ways to run this business. Whether it's on social media, whether it's in person, whether it's doing events, whether it's doing fundraisers, I don't care. You can find ways to work this business. And there's millions thousands, hundreds of thousands, probably not millions, hundreds of thousands of consultants out there figuring this out every single day. You are just as worthy as everybody else. You are capable, as capable as everybody else. Don't ever tell yourself different. And if you do, then you know what to do. Take it to heart and really focus in on your business. Organize your business. How are you going to work your, your business every single week? Make it a habit. Make it a habit that you will stick to. And if you're not good at habits, if you're not good at routines and that's not your thing and it doesn't bring you joy, because it brings me a whole lot of joy. But if it doesn't bring you joy, that's okay, right? Then I want you to start off small. You don't have to start off shooting for the moon, okay? Start off shooting for the next town over in a sense, okay? Start out with, I'm gonna have one party in May. A one party. I'll book one party. If that's where you need to start, then that's where you need to start. I'm gonna work on getting one person to sign up and create a Cincy Club through me. One person. And then once you get that first person, then your next goal is, why? Because who are you in competition with? Yourself, right? Okay, Jackie, I did, I, I had one person start a Sensi Club last month. Okay, this month, I'm gonna do two. I, I'm gonna do a little bit better than I did last month. I'm gonna try and get two people this month. Or I booked one party last month. All right, Jackie, I'm gonna try and book two parties this month. I'm going to reach out to those contacts. I'm going to maybe step out of my comfort zone and maybe when I'm at the restaurant or maybe when I am um, at the next kids event for baseball, I'm going to ask one of those moms, hey, would you be interested in doing a fundraiser for the team? Look for the opportunities that are all around you. Set a plan, set your goals, write them down. Because there is power in that, in the visualization of writing it down. Write it down. And make that commitment to yourself because, again, if nobody has told you lately, you are worthy. You are capable. You can do anything you set your mind to. And I will be your biggest hype person every single day. All right, guys, that's what I've got for you this Tuesday. Uh, I don't know if I just got a delivery or what's happening, but I'm going to go check that out, and I will talk to you guys later. Have a great one.